everybody, my name is Roshni, this is my channel Betty Grew Up, and on this channel we talk about how to take back control of your mental health. And mental health can also be really impacted by the people in our lives and the relationships that we have, and that's why you constantly hear people talking about, you know, whether someone is toxic to them. Being able to surround yourself with a friend group who genuinely cares about who you are and who will be there for you if things go wrong and who aren't there to judge you or to shame you is so completely vitally important. Your friends kind of become like the sounding board for your life. So if people are encouraging you to, you know, keep trying harder and to keep bettering yourself in a positive way but are also, you know, very loving to you when you fall down or when you stumble or when something on your path goes wrong, that's what you need. You need people around you that will help you find empathy towards yourself and will help you give you some tough love if you need it sometimes. You know, you need the kind of friend that will tell you that you have something in your teeth and not someone who's just kind of a fair weather friend that's along for the ride but isn't actually going to be there for you when things go wrong. So I wanted to make this video on toxic relationships and how you can handle them because a lot of the times it's really really tricky and for a lot of people um, their toxic relationships happen to be with people in their own family and so it gets really difficult and really tricky when you know it's coming down to whether you're going to cut someone in your family off or whether you're even going to go home for the holidays. The first point that I wanted to make is that when it comes to cutting people off, I think there's a really big line between someone acting differently and it potentially being an issue of their own mental health or something that's coming up for them or something that's going on in their life that you might not even know about and putting up with someone's behavior constantly that's putting you down or pulling you back. First of all, when it comes to someone else's mental health, we never know what's going on in their mind. And with the recent things that have been happening with Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain, which are both extremely heartbreaking stories, you really it really just shows you how much whatever is externally going on in your life might not be indicative of your internal reality. And it's so important that as friends we can start to recognize when someone else might be feeling a bit depressed or might be checking out or might be acting out of character and know that that might mean that something else is going on. So my first step is to always check in with that person, if, especially if it is, like I said, something that they're doing that's completely out of character or just something that seems like you know, if they're being flaky all of a sudden, but they used to be really reliable, a lot of the times when we're starting to feel depressed and really anxious, a lot of that can turn into self-loathing, and then that self-hatred can make us want to isolate ourselves or say that we're not good enough to hang out with our friends and things like that. So I would say that the number one step you should take if you are worried that someone might have a toxic effect on you or might be a toxic person is to always just is to always just check in on them and see, you know, is there something that's going on in their life? Is there something that maybe they haven't told you about? And even if they don't want to spill everything to you right then and there, just let them know that you are here for them if things go wrong. And even if you haven't talked in a couple of months, if something really is the matter, then, you know, you should be able to lend that willing shoulder to them. But of course, this is in a situation where the person is normally a great friend, they're normally really supportive, and then you've noticed like a shift in their personality or a shift in their behavior. Um, and it's so important that we don't say, you know what, just because you flaked on me a couple of times means that we're not friends anymore. Because I've been on both sides of that where, you know, I've been the person who hates getting being, hates getting flaked on, but then I've also been the person that is so excited, builds themselves up for these plans, and then, you know, a few hours before has a panic attack, has an anxiety attack, and just cannot do it, or is so depressed and I feel so devoid of personality that it hurts to be around other people having fun because I forgot what that feels like. So the first step is, you know, to to never take it to the point where that person feels like they're completely isolated, they have no friends, no one cares if they live or die, and um, you know, that's something to be very conscious of. Suicide is a very real thing, and it's it can be really easy, especially if your friends are ditching you, to feel more motivated that no one cares about you, so you know, I might as well just end this life now. And that's never what we want. So that was the first thing that I wanted to say is always start by checking in on that person and making sure that it's some it's not something else. So we talk about toxic relationships and we talk about toxic people and that's all valid, 
but there could also be the case where a person is completely good, they're a great person, they have great morals, great ethics, whatever, and they're not trying to hurt anyone, they're not trying to hurt you, but something about their life or their energy affects you negatively. And this can also happen with, with family, like I mentioned earlier, where, you know, they're people that you love. You don't necessarily think that you should never see them again or that you don't care less, that you couldn't care less about them. But instead, it's more that even though that person's a totally great person, they could still affect you in a negative way. And sometimes it's not even about them. Sometimes it's just your energetic fields just aren't meshing right now. Sometimes people just have their shit together and it's so intimidating. Like you feel like you're falling apart or you feel like you're building yourself back up and sometimes someone's like perfect life can be triggering for you. So just know that you can separate the effect that someone has on you from that person and you can just you know maybe limit hanging out with them a little bit more. Just make sure that in your head you're saying this person's life might be perfect, but my life is great and I'm on this journey and I'm grateful for this journey. If you can get to that level of thinking, that would be ideal. Um, but there can be the situation where someone is having basically a toxic effect on you without being a toxic person. And I think that situation can be handled delicately. Depending on your relationship, you might even want to talk to them about that and say, hey, look, it really kind of triggers me when you talk about your job because I'm really unemployed right now and I'm constantly searching and you basically have such a great dream job and I know that it's really important to you but something about that is just triggering me and you can be really honest about these things and if that's something that's really unattainable for you or if they're a new friend and you're nervous to bring something like that up then try and you know hang out in a scenario where that might not be the case or where you can hang out with them and do a cool different activity like you know hike or zipline or you know do something totally different pay attention to how a person is actually affecting you and how their lives are if whether their lives are causing friction between you and them or not. So my third point is about setting boundaries. So of course, um, like I just mentioned, you know, it could be the case where someone has a negative effect on you, but they're actually a great person. But it could also be that, you know, maybe someone's part of your family. Maybe you're not ready to cut them off. Maybe they haven't done something completely unforgivable to you. But maybe it's just like, Every time you see them, they're commenting on your your appearance. They're telling you that you are too dark if you're a woman of color. They're telling you that you're too tall, too skinny, too fat, too short, whatever it might be. And, you know, sometimes it'll be that, or it'll be like a slight backhanded compliment about your outfit or about your relationship status or whatever it might be. And those little nicks can really constantly chip at you and can make it really hard for you to be around that person. So... If that's the case, you don't, like I said, you don't have to go and cut people off immediately. You can take things step by step. So the first step, if, you know, someone really is having a repeatedly constant negative effect on you, the first thing that you can do is do some processing on your own and set boundaries when you are alone in your own space, when you have time to think clearly about that and then present those boundaries to that person. Obviously I'm Indian, so I know what it can be like to be around communities of color that it's kind of like you can't tell them how to treat you and your elders, you know, you're supposed to respect your elders, your elders don't respect you. And a lot of communities of color have similar values where it's like, listen, you know, to the older people, they're always right, but it doesn't matter how they talk to you because that's kind of just what you deserve. And because you're young or you, because you're someone's child, you don't deserve respect. And it can be really difficult because, you know, you love your family, you don't want to cut them off and you know that it's a cultural thing you know you know that they grew up with the same ideals and that's why they have them so in a situation like that it can be really tricky and i understand how absurd it may sound but if you can set some sort of boundaries or come up with some sort of response to say like look you know i want to come to your house i want to be at this wedding i want to be at these family functions but please do not talk to me about my relationship status or when I'm getting married. And sometimes, you know, you just have to take it, especially with like acquaintances or people that you don't see all the time. Um, and in a situation like that, come up with like a witty response or something that you can say back in every situation and eventually your answer will just be the same for everyone and you're not bullshitting anyone because you're just saying the same thing to all of them and hopefully eventually they will catch on or at least get sick of the response. So 
I understand that it can definitely be tricky, um, especially with elders or with family members, but ideally you would try to figure out, you know, is there one particular thing that's a trigger for me when I'm around this person? Is there one thing that should be off limits? Um, or you could set boundaries around completely different things, like this one person's house, like I will just not go if they're hosting a function. And that might be a little bit more harsh, but if they're constantly attacking you and constantly making you feel bad about yourself and constantly saying that you are unworthy or undeserving or unattractive or that your future is gonna turn out, like they're building stories about you in their heads and trying to project that on you in your head. And that can seriously affect you because again, like I talk about all the time on this channel, the stories that we tell ourselves and the stories that other people around us tell us about ourselves are what factor into our sense of self and our identity. And that's what can factor into the choices that you make and the profession that you go into and how you see yourself. So if you are constantly allowing yourself to be around people that are putting you down, even if they're in your family, and you're not saying, and you're not even, you know, standing up for yourself in your own head, you're going to slowly let that penetrate you and become part of your identity. And whether that causes, I mean, at the very least, that would cause guilt and cognitive dissonance if you are saying something about yourself in your mind, but then acting a different way. And at the very worst, that could seriously cause you to go into a major depression to make multiple incorrect, you know, or, you know, multiple wrong choices about your life that you didn't actually ever want to do. And you can wake up 10 or 15 years later feeling like you're a total alien in your own life. And that's definitely an extreme, but if you're, you know, allowing yourself to say that whatever other people say about me is what is true, then that's when you can get into some serious danger. That's when criticism can hurt the most, and that's when we change ourselves to please other people. And none of that is serving yourself or helping yourself grow. It's just causing you to twist and contort into these different things that don't don't actually help you at all in life. The first step would be to set boundaries. And you know, like I said, this is after you've checked in with them. This is after they've violated you or, you know, said something bad to you multiple times. So, you know, this is after you've given them multiple chances. You can go ahead and set boundaries and define what that means for you. And it is really important to do that on your own instead of waiting um, or trying to sort it out in a conversation because especially if that is the case where this person has this kind of power over you or might have the ability to manipulate you, you are getting into this dangerous zone where you want to get something out of the conversation, then that person kind of contorts that conversation and makes it into something else that was entirely their own idea. And then if you try and bring it up again, they're like, oh, well, we already talked about it and you said this was fine and blah, blah, blah. Make sure you're going into that knowing what your boundaries are. So your boundaries can be not going to a certain person's house. It could be only seeing people on holidays. It could be um, not having like certain topics being off limits, things like that. So my next point and the next step in this process is then, you know, just kind of giving it a trial period in your own mind and saying, okay, Three months ago, I set these boundaries with this person, and now, today, they have actually been able to stick to what they said, blah, blah, blah. Um, so hopefully that would be the ideal scenario in which, you know, you feel like you have some weight in the relationship and you can have a conversation about it, and once they know that something is really bothering you or hurting your feelings, hopefully they can just let that go and move on. But if it's the situation where you've talked to them about this, you've settled your boundaries, and they continue to violate them over and over and over again, that is when you are getting into the area where you might need to cut someone off or put some serious restrictions on your relationship. So again, with boundaries, you know, there might be like a, a couple of mistakes where someone, you know, you said, please don't talk to me about my relationship status. And maybe, you know, you see them in two months and they ask you about something and you're like, hey, remember, you know, we had that conversation, like it just really makes me uncomfortable. And it's something that I want to talk about with you, but I would rather bring it up with you because sometimes it can be triggering for me when you bring it up with me. So it's okay for them to make, you know, a mistake or two, especially if you explain it to them and they respond and it's fine. But if they are constantly violating that boundary, if they are making fun of you for even making that boundary in the first place, if they're saying, my words shouldn't have an effect on you, but then continue to berate you and treat you negatively and speak to you in a negative way, then it might be time to cut that person off because at this point you've 
been really honest and you've taken their, that relationship seriously and you've thought about it and you've set a boundary, you've had an open conversation with them about what those boundaries are, and you may have even reminded them once or twice about what your boundaries are. But if someone is constantly, repeatedly violating something that you say is important to you, then how much do they really care about you? And are they actually trying to just manipulate you because at this point you've done your part by checking in on them and seeing how they're doing and then by also saying you know I want to continue this relationship but is it okay if we just don't talk about this one thing or is it okay if I don't see you on these couple of holidays that are particular tr particularly triggering for me so if you've gotten that far and they're still not listening to you you probably should cut them off and I did want to mention a psychological term called enmeshment. And so this is basically when, you know, this exists a lot in like um, childhood, parent-child relationships if there's childhood abuse going on. But a lot of times in a lot of different kind of abusive relationships or in um, toxic partnerships and things like that, there's this idea that, you know, your entire life is about this other person's life. So everything that you do is going to depend on, you know, their temper, their attitude, how they feel that day, what their triggers are, what their emotional, what their emotions are. And if you, you know, want something just for yourself, it becomes a problem and you can't act in a way that is natural to you without having to worry about how they're going to take it and how they're going to react to it. And it basically becomes this way of life where you are so limited because your entire life is defined by the spontaneous emotional temper or re reactions of this one other person. And so they just want to completely take over your life. They want to be your everything. And that's why in a lot of domestic um, partnerships or you know in a lot of domestic abuse situations, one of the first things that people do and one of the biggest red flags is when they try to isolate you from your friends and from your loved ones and from your family because when they have you all to their, I mean because they want you all to their selves and they want themselves to be your entire life and so it can be really really scary to be in a relationship like that or you know have a friend or, or a family member like that because you are basically not being al not allowed to be your own person and that's terrifying obviously and it takes a lot a lot a lot of courage to walk away from something like that because not only do you have to break that off but you have to completely start over and you have to find a way to be your own person on top of that so you're trying to figure out who you are you're trying to restart your life also without knowing who you are and you are you know trying you're basically changing the most stable ish thing in your life. So that can take a lot of courage, but that is such an important step on your healing journey. And if you do make the step to cut off a relationship or to walk away from, you know, a, a toxic family member or something else like that, it is going to benefit you so much, not only because you're no longer in that situation, but because you have the sense of agency and you have taken the steps already to to fight for yourself, to fight for what you need, to say that I am deserving of someone who treats me right. I am deserving of my own boundaries. I'm deserving of being my own person. I'm deserving of my own space. And all of those things are so incredibly important because that is what is going to instigate your entire journey to finding yourself. It's all going to essentially be instigated from that one step of sticking up for yourself and taking a risk and saying, I need better than this. I deserve better than this. And that's just final. So if you are in the process of doing that, or if that something that you think that you need to do in the future or something that you need to figure out how to do it's so scary in the moment and it's such a big deal and I definitely don't want to take any of that away from you and a big part of your journey is the courage that it takes to step out into the unknown and to make a move like that but also I myself have started over so many times when we talk about things like our chosen family because it proves that there are so many communities out there and so many people out there who had to start over, who had to find a new family. This earth is so big and there's so many different pockets and people that you can meet that can make you feel welcome and so many different communities that you can join. And there is another side um, and it will, it will get better. It's really, really scary to start over, but so many people have done it and you can do it too. And there will be something so much sweeter waiting for you on the other side. And even if you are 
alone for a while or it takes you a while to find your chosen family or to really resonate with people, you have still taken such a major step in standing up for yourself and in dictating the story of your life and not waiting around and having your life just happen. You're taking control and that is such a huge step and just know that the universe sees you and there are good things coming your way. The final thing that I wanted to say is that if it is extremely difficult for you to leave or if you are in an unsafe situation, I It's a little bit more difficult to give blanket advice for something like that because it depends on so many factors and every situation is unique. But I will include different links to hotlines um, in the description box below so that if you are in any of the situations that are described in the box below that you can find some resources or someone to talk to that would be able to help you out a little bit more specifically. So I will try and include um, as many national hotlines as I can um, so that anyone in the U.S. would be able to find them. You know, do what you can, do what you need to do to make your exit um, or to make your departure as safe as possible because that is the most important thing at the end of the day is your safety and your well-being. You know, if there is any way that I can help you or if you would like you know, some personal advice, um, please do feel free to email me. I would love to hear from you. And this is, you know, a situation that, like I said, is a lot of the times better dealt on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So go ahead and call those hotlines. But if there is a specific scenario that you think that I could help you with or a question about cutting people off or something like that um, that you wanted to ask me, please go ahead and do so. Wow, so this was a pretty heavy video, but I do hope that it was helpful for you. I think having kind of a step-by-step -step process in knowing when it's right to cut people off and when it's right to give people a chance can be really helpful. So let me know in the comments below if you've tried any of this or if you have been able to successfully set boundaries with someone in your life and how that went. And otherwise, I am now officially on Patreon, so I will link that below. Um, I do all kinds of exclusive offers and give um, tons of exclusive content on there. Essentially I would use that to create more free content so that I can keep um, topics on mental health as free and accessible as possible. And again, you can follow me on Instagram. I put daily affirmations and tons of posts related to mental health and better well-being on there. And you can also check out my website, which I will put here as well. Don't forget to thumbs up this video if you liked it. And if you want to see more content like it, please go ahead and subscribe and ding that notification bell so that you can get notified every time I have a new video. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I love you all. Happy healing.